Welcome. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and uh, welcome to The Essence of Emeril. Today's show is all about fish that come from my adopted home, the state of Louisiana. Uh, most of these fish are all found in the Gulf or certainly in the brackish waters. I love to fish for them, but most importantly, I love to cook with them. And uh, they happen to all be unique and have unique qualities all of their own. Now, at the restaurant, we use a lot of these different fish. And right here at, on the Television Food Network, right from Louisiana this morning, thanks to my good friend Craig Borges, and Craig is my fisherman and fish purveyor for many years and a great friend, and uh, we flew this up to share with you. Uh, and then I'm going to do a couple of great dishes. But let me share some of my favorite fish with you. This here is um, a speckled trout, which is uh, fished a lot, particularly in the fall, winter, and spring. Uh, they're really fun to catch. And Mike, if you're watching, my brother-in-law Mike, we, uh, we just went out last week and caught a whole bunch of these guys and had a great time. Another one of my favorite fish from the Gulf is the red snapper. Uh, really, really white, lean meat, a lot like the speckled trout. Uh, really, really delicious. Uh, we, we do lots of things at the restaurant with snapper. I'm going to do a dish later on in the show, a little crispy seared snapper with a little slaw that I'm going to make. But uh, you can also stuff these whole and take the bone out. We do all kinds of great things with them. Another simple but really wonderful fish from the Gulf and also from my childhood is some flounder. And uh, I like to stuff them and uh, fillet them, roll them. Uh, very delicate uh, fish. Really, really wonderful. Uh, probably one of the most unique fish, both of them, coming out of the Gulf right now. This guy right here, this is the pompano. And uh, a pompano is a really, really great fish. A lot of favorite dishes made with pompano. Uh, they're fun to catch, and uh, th probably the most popular fish from the Gulf and from Louisiana, and certainly from my friend Paul Prudhomme, is the redfish. And uh, how you can tell the redfish is it always has this little dot at the end of the tail, and that's how you can really tell the difference between a redfish and also a drum or drumfish, which is very close to red and black drum family. And uh, redfish, really delicious, a little redfish kubion. Now, these fish that we have, uh, this dish that I'm going to do with the red snapper is a little seared red snapper with a parsnip slaw and herb jus. Doesn't that sound delicious? Now, what I did is I peeled some parsnips and then I just juliand them, cut strips down just like a carrot, and juliand them real, real small. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my parsnip, make a little relish for our snapper dish that we're going to do. And then what I have is a little bit of champagne vinegar, a little champagne vinegar. You could use citrus. And I also have got a little bit of olive oil, some good olive oil. And um, I've got some green onion and a little dice of sweet red pepper. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some salt. And then we're going to add some freshly ground, freshly ground pepper. going to toss those around, those ingredients around. Now, I thank again Craig for sending this as here so fresh and so quick. My little adopted fish from the Gulf, from Louisiana. And uh, also in Louisiana, we happen to have some great crab meat. So I've got some lump crab meat uh, that I've picked. And when you work with crab meat, 
and you buy lump or jumbo lump crab meat, they have shells as well. But then you've spent all this money paying for this delicious lump crab meat. So when you work with it, you want to be careful and look for the shells. And uh, I did that ahead of time, pulled out the shells. And you notice that I'm adding the crab meat last because I don't want the crab meat to just be shredded crab meat or I would have just paid half the price and bought shredded or claw meat. Now, I've got my parsnip crab slaw ready. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Delicious. When you have ingredients so fresh, so simple, as you can see, when we come back after the break, I'm going to prepare the snapper dish. Don't go away. Stay with me on the Essence of Emerald. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for staying with me here on the Essence of Emeril. Now I'm going to uh, just show you how to put this great dish together, a little crispy snapper. And uh, we just fillet a little snapper out, as I have here. And um, one thing with the snapper is that you want to rinse it and sort of either with a knife or with a scaler, you want to sort of get those big scales out. Rinse it under cold water, just like I did there and uh, after you fillet it. Now the next part is that you want to look for some of the bones, if there are any bones left from when you filleted. And if there's going to be any bones, it's going to be in this section here, which is the belly section of the fish, that I sort of came down and took that bone. And then you want to check and see if there are any other bones left. And if there are, you want to remove them, unless you like eating bones, of course. But you see what I did is I came back underneath that and took the belly part of that out now I'm checking it. There's no bones, and uh, there's also no scales. Scale that fish, and now we have our fillet of snapper ready. This delicious crab and uh, parsnip slaw. And uh, what I want to show you now, I'm going to do a simple sauce with this. I took a little bit of fish stock, some great fish stock, and uh, we're going to just pull it off. And uh, you see that? Now, you take the bones from the snapper and a little maripois and uh, cover it with water, a little salt, a little pepper, bring it up to boil, then let it simmer for about 30 minutes. And you got this very simple little fish stock from the bone of the, uh, the, the, the carcass of the uh, snapper. And now what we've got is this delicious little fish broth, a little fish stock. Strain it out, and that's what I have here. And I'm going to put that back on the stove. And to do this very simple, simple, fresh tasting sauce, you don't need a sauce. You could just use a, a little citrus, perhaps. But I'm going to make a little sauce for you. I got a lot of fresh chopped parsley. You see that? About four or five tablespoons. And I'm going to put that right inside of that. And then, bam, instantly, look at this. The stock has already started turning green, like emerald green. And then I have some fresh chives, about four tablespoons of fresh chives. And I'm going to add that inside of my stock. So now I've got parsley and I've got some chive in there and the fish stock. And now what I want to do is I'm going to add some fresh ground pepper to give it a little oomph and a little bit of salt. You see that? Now, cooking term is to, we're going to let this simmer. And what we're doing is we're actually extracting. We're extracting the wonderful flavors out of them fresh herbs. And you want to keep pushing those herbs back down into the sauce. See that? And we're just going to let that lightly simmer. And then I'm going to come back and finish that up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start cooking our great snapper. I got a hot skillet, and I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Oh, 
almost to, to the smoking point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that wonderful spice, that Creole spice, that essence of mine, and s start seasoning both sides of the snapper. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start sauteing that up. start sauteing that up. Now let me show you another trick. You see, when you have the, the fish and you're cooking fish with the skin on it, it has a tendency sometimes of it can buckle, particularly when you're working with high heat. So a little trick is to just score your fish, the skin of the fish a little bit, and that way it won't buckle and it won't sort of look like, you know, it just buckles up sometimes because of the heat. So we're cooking our snapper. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take our stock, taste this, mm, and we're going to add a little liaison. And that's when we add a little cream or you could do it with eggs. We're adding cold to hot which is going to sort of be like a little thickening little thickening agent, a little bit of cream in there. You see that? We're going to cream it. You can add a little butter if you'd like. You don't have to add the cream, but you're going to add a little bit of cream. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our great immersion blender. I'm going to puree some, some more of that parsley and chive in there a little bit. just to break it down just a little. I'm going to let that start a simmering a little bit. We'll come back to that and finish that in a second. Now, let's check on our fish, our crispy snapper. About three minutes. Look at that. Woo! Really high heat. Now you can see the fish is really getting very close, but it's crispy. You see, it's crispy, and that's what we're doing here, making a little bit of crispy, crispy snapper. Now, we're going to use that immersion blender one more time and just puree this up. Perfect. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to taste our sauce. Mmm. Going to adjust the seasoning a bit. And that's going to be a perfect base. Just a right light little, almost very brothy. You see that? Now we've got our sauce. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this wonderful parsnip and crab meat slaw that we made. And we're going to put that right in the center. Ooh, woo. Looking good. You can pile it as high as you want and pile a nice, delicious slaw of parsnips. And then take our crispy fish and we just sort of, hey, one filet would, it would do the trick. But uh, I'm a little hungry right now, so I'm going to have two filets. And uh, when we come back, look at that. We'll just finish it just like this. We just put a little bit more very fine chive and a little more of that essence, just like that. And boy, you've got a great dish. And coming up, another prize right from the Gulf. Stay with me. We'll be right back on the Essence of Emerald.
welcome back. This next fish dish I call Annie's peasant style fish. We like to do it a lot with escala, which is another great fish from the Gulf. We just couldn't get any today. They're really hard to get. But uh, Annie, Ann Kearney is her name, and she's a, she's a doll and a good friend, and we work together. And uh, this one's for you, Annie. Here we go. I'm going to use pompano since we couldn't get escala. And uh, simply going to just fillet this pompano. We make a little half moon cut. You see what I'm doing right there? You get a little half moon cut right to the backbone. And then we work that knife just like that along the backbone. Then you can just sort of peek inside and say, hey, how am I doing? Get right into that backbone. And you just follow that backbone. And you work the knife right through. And you bring that down just like that. And then you hold on to this guy. And you work the knife back up like that. You see that? And that's how you fillet pompano. It's that simple. Now. Now that I got the pompano filleted, you're going to just trim the bones out. There's that belly bone I was telling you about. We'll just take that belly bone out, trim it up. And then what I like to do, I like to uh, take the pompano for this particular dish. What we're going to do is we're going to just take the skin off of it. So here's how you do that. We're going to start. Work the knife to the skin just like that. You see that? And hold on to the tail. And then we're just going to work the knife, hang on to that tail, and bam, you got it. We'll throw that away. Now we've got our great filet of pompano. We're going to check for bones. And there's a little bone right there. We're going to make a little V. I should have been a surgeon. And then we'll take that bone out. We're going to dust it with some of that essence. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start sauteing this with a little oil in our hot skillet. And we're going to start sauteing the fish just like that. And while our pompano is sauteing away, Now what we're going to do is this. I'm going to clean up our board a little bit. I've got some ingredients for this peasant style, Annie's peasant style. I've got some green olive, red onion. I've got a little bit of ga garlic. It could be fresh or raw. A little tomato that's chopped up. I've got some eggplant that's chopped up. Black olives, a little parsley. And then I've got some herbs, preferably a little rosemary and a little thyme, okay? And this is just a little bit of beef stock. You could use chicken stock, fish stock, whatever. So we're going to see how our pompano is doing now. And when our pompano is cooking and we get it, when we flip it over, you see that? Pompano quicks very, it cooks very, very, very quick. When we get the pompano in there, this is the great thing that I like about dishes like this. Everything goes inside the pan. I love those dishes like that. Everything goes in the pan. You see that? Cook it up like that. Peasant style, some fresh ground pepper. Hey, we'll add a little bit more olive oil. A little green onion wouldn't hurt. And then, once that fish is cooked, we take the fish out and set it on our plate. You know what I like? I like to just put a big pile of french fries, a big pile of shoestring potatoes. And then when you're ready, you put that big nest of shoestring potatoes there and the fish on top, and you finish it with some of those juices like that. You see? You see that? A little bit of butter that we just kind of put in there, hold. Look at that. Whoo, boy. I'll tell you. A little bit more green onion like that. Any fish can do it. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you tomorrow right here on The Essence of Emerald. Bye now.